Welcome back, everybody, on another episode of Anthem, a funeral home's perspective. Uh, today, we have our good friends uh, from Eminence, Gadeep and Sukha here. Today, we'll be talking about community and uh, giving back, and also on a uh, on something that we set up last year called funerallive.ca and how Eminence got that going for us. Uh, so we're going to get right into that now. All right, guys. So the theme, obviously, for this podcast video series is community. Um, you guys in the past have joined us in a lot of initiatives together. Yep. Why don't you guys explain those a little bit and explain what drove you to step up? Um, it's a great question, Ashpani. Um, so for us uh, in the past, you know, I'd say maybe like two years, three years, especially, um, we've been kind of thinking of ways of how we can start giving back to the community. Um, and for us, it's about giving back and it's not really about the recognition. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times, and that's kind of how we met for a lot of things was you guys had a lot of initiatives going on and we realized that, you know, there was gaps, you know, um, for example, if there was a toy drive going on, you know, there wasn't enough toys in some situations, right? Um, and it came to uh, the food the food drive you guys did. You know, you guys were looking for volunteers, teams to pack, right? Um, so for us, it was just filling those gaps in the community. And and that's kind of what drives us. You know, we, we see who it benefits and um, we've always wanted to give back. And you guys, you know, have, in a lot of cases have stepped up big for the community mm. to start these initiatives. Um, and I think it's important for, you know, businesses, other businesses to step in and help those businesses running these initiatives. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's always important to like, one, we're all in business we you know we work hard but like i think giving back is is at one point you know you're helping the community and you're doing something for the community and you know our generation i feel like the generation prior to us like our parents they they struggled a lot but they used to give back a lot they used yeah. to you know do a lot of initiatives like didn't your dad you know was always involved in the community um and you know i think we want to you know continue that tradition and actually set a standard like hey we should be doing this right we should be giving back and then secondly is i think it's also very self-fulfilling as well it's like yep. you know like when we when we came to the funeral home and we we packed all those all that food right yeah. it's you know it's fulfilling that you know we're actually doing something with our time we're actually giving back to the community giving back to somebody in need and that i think those two kind of pieces i think how, just helping in general feels yeah, yeah, good sure. right uh, like uh, you're in a room full of your friends and for once you're not talking about like business or sports <laughs> or whatever you're always talking exactly, about exactly yeah. it's nice to change up the the situation and, a little bit and you know when you're done with a lot of these campaigns it's like you're never tired you know, it's like yeah. you almost want to do, you choice. want to do more, right? Yeah. Like, um, prime example, like we just did the Kassan campaign, right? Um, with everything going on in Punjab and India right now. Um, but prime Very example well there, you know, um, and one thing we've realized over the years, is, you know, we have the platform, right? We've exactly. been given this platform and a lot of times we're just using it to promote ourselves and market ourselves, but no one's really ever thinking about how can I use this to give back? Um, in this case, you know, you guys, again, thank you to you guys. You guys stepped up big to help with that campaign. Um, but together as a community, you know, using our platforms, we were able to raise over $20,000 yeah. to help out with cost. Like speaking to what Gadeep said, where our, our parents' generation might not have always had the financial well-being to give back, but they always organized yep. things in numbers where even if everybody gave a little bit, uh, it would mean something, right? Yep. So if you don't have the money, you might have the platform to get people together to do something, right? And just sticking to that topic, like we couldn't move forward without giving Sukha a shout out. I know, I know that's I, not... Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was actually about to say yeah, that because, you know, yeah. uh, usually somebody, you know, needs to take the lead and yeah. like in this particular case, like Sukha actually like went above and beyond. I was like, people used to call me like, hey, what, are we, what can we do? I'm like, you know what, guys, I'm just a volunteer just like you guys. Yeah. So because the boss, like whatever he tells me to do, I'm like, <laughs> like, yeah, you I made it go viral and I think you didn't, that was not your intention. I know, and like, yeah. I know the type you are. It wasn't like the Instagram or this, but man, the outreach you did in the short time was amazing. And I, for those people that don't know, do you want to kind of explain yeah, um, exactly what, what it was? You know, again, like, so uh, again, if like anyone doesn't know, there's a lot of resources online right now in terms of what's going on in India with the farmers. Um, and when, one thing we realized quickly, again, like for us, like we said, it's always about filling those gaps, right? And at that time, a big gap was, was funds, right? Um, there was needs there and Khal Said was one of the ones filling those gaps. Um, so again, we, you know, we started a, a campaign where we started printing clothing. Uh, and the main thing behind the clothing was to kind of get the message out. Uh, but with that came, you know, we'll donate a hundred percent of all the proceeds from this. Yeah. Um, and we started off with the goal, you know, it said $2,000, $3,000, we'll do it. I was actually stressing when I started, if we'd meet the minimums with the supplier. Um, and, you know, two weeks later, we're sitting at $20,000 raised. Uh -huh. Right. Um, and it was crazy. And again, like I said, a lot of people in the community were scared, you know, to step up for whatever reasons. But like at the end of the day, 
um, a big thing for us and we realize is we be- we as a community benefit so much from Punjabi culture, right? Yeah, yeah of, course, um, of course. And when it came now to helping the same culture that, you know, saying like a lot of people were hesitant, right? But I don't think that was the case for us. And and again, like I said, you guys supporting, you guys, you guys stepped up big. You guys raised over $5,000 for this campaign, right? Yeah. Also, um, the sweater is really comfortable. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and, and you know what it was? It, 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 it all came together, right? So it, it was crazy that the community stepped up. And like you said, it's it's hard for one person to be like, hey, you know, if I send a twenty dollar donation, and am I really making a difference? Yeah. But as soon as we were able, and again, like you said, like it wasn't about me or you know Gurdip or you guys, right? Like I actually didn't even care if our name was on it. I mean, for the longest time, we didn't even mention Eminence. Eminence wasn't even mentioned as yep. a part of this, right? So um, it wasn't that. And I was, I was actually saying, you know what? If somebody else wants to take the credit and make this even bigger, by all means, right? Like yeah. we're just trying to get to the end. We goal. have a we have a friend that's actually in Punjab right now and pretty much everybody from our little WhatsApp group donated a little bit. Again, that one person didn't have to didn't have the means to give all yeah. that themselves, but they had the outreach, right? They had yeah. the platform yeah. and it's all it was was a WhatsApp group, right? And you know, I think I think we need to get a special shout out to all the guys that came in, help pack the gear. Hundred percent like all of our friends. I mean there's a lot of them to name, but uh, you know, donating their time, energy efforts uh during covid and all that kind of stuff is is important as well right um yep. and i think i think it just goes to show like you know how much power we actually have as our generation like you know our parents have done really well and now it's up to us to take it a little bit further right 100% agree with you. um one thing i did want to ask Sukkah is why why call aid why why was that the the charity chosen yeah so i sorry, think that's important to i think out. that's a great question and and you know to be honest with you um, it took me before I actually launched the campaign a couple of days, almost a week to kind of, you know, decide on where we want to go. But Call Said, I followed for years, right? And if you look at Call Said, they'll actually never ask for donations. Like they're not, like, even for Punjab, they're not actively asking for donations, but anytime there's a crisis in the world, they're the first ones there, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so Ravi's saying, you know, regardless of where it is, right? it doesn't matter. They, they don't discriminate. You know what I'm saying? They've been all around the world, anywhere there's a crisis. Um, and I, you know what? I thought it was important that an organization that's never asking for funds, you know, and they had, and for this case, they were actually saying if any other organization needs funds or needs, yeah. you know, water or whatever, just let us know where you need it. We don't care about the credit, yeah. right? We'll get it there. And I think that was huge for us is, you know, and then I was able to actually get directly in touch with, you know, um, Bal, who is Ravi Singh's wife, and then as well as their uh, director in Canada, uh, Jitinder. Uh, so these guys, like getting in touch with them, having that personal connection, was, there was a lot of trust there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, for a lot of people donating, it was, that was another big part of this, right? Is trust, exactly. right? You are, you are blindly accepting that like, to be honest with you, 80% of people who ordered don't actually know me personally, right? Um, which is crazy. Like there was, there was a lot of people that knew us that ordered, but there's people from Cali, and Chicago. They're, they're sending you e-transfer. They're sending me yeah. e-transfer and like, yeah. this is cash essentially, yeah. right? Um, I think, I think that's why it goes, it goes further for the brands, right? Like, you know, you might not know Silk, you might not go deeper, Paneer, like, they know brands are coming to time. They know eminence. And that's why yep. it's important to put your brands behind it because yep. it, it does give that extra little bit of trust, right? Even like here now, like people are coming to pick up their stuff still. Like for guys who haven't picked it up, please. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so Look these getting everything done in this video series today. <laughs> but like it's, it, you know, they, they're actually, you know, saying, oh, you know what? Thank you so much. Because I'm usually here the ones when they're doing the pickups. Yeah. And it, it just gives that extra level of trust. Yes. I think, and that, 100%. That's and then again, like I said, like that trust is huge, right? And, um, you know, going circling back to everything else we've done, right? Like uh, with the toy drive, you know, we always make sure that once we've done it, we, we're getting some kind of uh, something material from that organization to say, you know what, it was given, right? Yeah. Um, so like, you know what I'm saying? Like the toys, when we did with uh, Peel Region Police, we were able to make sure they gave us a certificate for that. Um, same with Call Said, you know, they've confirmed that they've received these donations, right? And I think that's really important, right? Um, and again, with this campaign, it was all about trust. So I was going as far as telling people, hey, when you come pick up your stuff, if you want to see the transactions, I'm willing to open that up yeah. to everyone, right? It's, um, but just going forward, I think this campaign showed us what we can do. And I think we all agree that we should continue to do it and even do it on a bigger scale. I think just in the short time, getting the people together. And, yeah. and for the most part, you didn't even try to reach businesses because you just yeah. were like, guys, whoever wants to help. Because you're not a pushy type of person. 100%. Yeah. And then even with me, Hadeep and Jatin, there it was just like, guys, we want to do something, but also we're busy, right? They're at the funeral home. What can we do? And Right away, we knew to join in with you guys. You guys have supported us so many times in the past. We're like, yo, these guys are the guys we want to join. You know, that's actually something that me and Sukkot talk about all the time. Like, there's a lot of the times, you know, everyone has good intentions, but there's like 10 different fundraisers going on. Or there's like, you know, so many different things. It's better to sometimes just, hey, let's just join these guys. Yeah. These guys are taking the lead. Like, that's 
for you guys like we've done that so many times like you know what we want to do this these guys are in line let's just join them yeah right like you let them take the lead and we just you know help them out where we can kind of thing and i think that's important uh it's better to um collectively do things as opposed to a lot of people doing a lot of i, I think that things. speaks to the recognition part of it that it doesn't really yeah, matter who's exactly. organizing right we're it's, stronger in numbers right i think as soon transparency as you matters that. but like you said it doesn't as soon matter as you who. remove recognition our power goes up tenfold, oh, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, prime example with the toy drive. When we the toy drive, we didn't actually have our own toy drive. There was no, you know, we just told people, hey, the community needs toys for toy drives, right? Um, and then, uh, Pani, you remember, like, you know, we came down, of, yeah. uh, SUV full of toys, and we filled up all the, the boxes we could there. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, the point is to get the, the toys to the, the kids, the kids yeah, right? Exactly. Um, and we didn't care about, you know, right. us going there to get the recognition. It just that uh, it ballooned to the point <laughs> where after bringing everything to you guys, we also had enough to yeah. cram a cruiser for Peel Region Police oh, for, for their sure. toy drive. So again, like I said, it just, it's just go- all these things have gone to sh- show us that, you know, we have the ability now and I don't think we should slow down or even, you know, go at the same pace. We should go, you know, bigger and better. And scale it up, right? We, we've, had sure. this, we've had this conversation. <laughs> yeah. How we, how we can scale this. And up. what you said, Gadi, was actually the best part of this is it's community. Like the yep. whole initiative of this is community. And as we scale up, it should always be community. Because when we, we're two businesses and other businesses that work with us. But when we talk about how many people are even in our age group and those businesses coming together, it is actually limitless, the potential, right? It's uh, it's what we were talking about. Like, Machacha has this amazing line, like, yeah. right? this country has given us so much. Like, it's up to us. To, yeah. We should be giving back. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, uh, especially as children of immigrants and things like that, I think it's very important that, you know, we recognize that we are doing what we can and let's, let's see how we can organize and do that a little bit further. All right, guys. So, just going to switch up gears here a little bit. Uh, I want to get into... Uh, what Eminence is uh, as a business, um, and how we met as two businesses, and uh, what what we can do for each other, and what we have done for each other so far. Yeah, um, I think uh, you know, uh, Eminence honestly started off as a joke, and I tell this story all the time, and people don't believe me, but it really did start off as a joke. It was you know, uh, me, Sukkah, and a couple of our buddies in one of our buddies' basements, and. Long That's where story. all the good companies started. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, we bought a couple speakers. Um, Sukkah started DJing. And, you know, fast forward now, what, five, six, seven years later? Yeah. We are we are a full service audiovisual company, and we also do entertainment. Um, you know, we've, we've started with entertainment, DJing, weddings, social events. Um, and that's still bread and butter. But we've, we've made a hard pivot towards AV, right? Audiovisual stuff is kind of what my passion is. Um, you know, combining tech and make, using technology to making people's lives easier and then accomplishing what you guys want to do. So that's in the gist of what Eminence is. And how would you guys say we started working together then? Um, you know, Pani, I think we... Actually, I think Deji did your wedding, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, <laughs> so uh, we, like, we, we met briefly and we knew each other. Um, but I think when we actually properly met is when you called me one day and said, hey, man, like, shit's hitting the fan here. Yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy. Um, can you come take a look? So I, I went down to the funeral home and you walked me through how your AV system was set up. And to be honest with you, it was it was a disaster. It was terrible. And, yeah. and, and you said you had just got it redone. Yeah. It that was, was really the hardest bad. part about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like, I mean, um, and then between that conversation and I think it took us almost six months, six to nine months for us to even start, you know, working together. But that was the original conversation. Like, hey, we, we have this issue. What's the best way to fix it kind of thing? Yeah. And what would you guys say? Like, I know we have a different topic for this later, but what would you guys say you did? The general gist of the AV, what did you guys do for us? I think it was two, two parts. There was our original... The install phase. Install, yeah. and then what we came to most recently. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I'll, I'll speak to... I'll let Sokka speak to the live stream stuff, but the install stuff was basically... Um, our goal was to be able to allow all your employees to be able to use the system in, in a nutshell, right? So basically, how do we design a system such that, you know, from people from like 20-year-olds 20, 20 who are very tech savvy to 60-year-olds or like your mother is still <laughs> yeah. looking at yeah. the how do, how do we design a system so that these guys are able to use it and it makes their life easier, right? Like my, my belief is technology should make your life easier. Yes. So we designed an iPad app. Everything is controlled by the iPad. It's not... 20 different remotes, this, that. It's just a couple of buttons. And I think, you know, if, if I do say so myself, I think we did a really good job. I think, you know, every time I go there, I always 
see the people walking around with the iPads yeah. and like it's good to see it's everything's off of there there's two of them now it's funny that you say that about the iPad going back quickly to that so Jadila's mom is one of our staff members there and she uses that thing like on her own right I, I know <laughs> <understand> <laughs> <many> <laughs> times in the morning everything set out and we're, guys we're talking about like you think about venues as in banquet halls this is still a lot of stuff that goes on camera angles and projectors yeah. being down so, laptops be honest, being connected guys, like the, the amount of automation that we've done at the funeral home we don't have that at our venues yeah uh usually because you know our technicians are a little bit they you guys are there you're on site and and they're 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 on site yeah so we don't need to go that crazy with it but for you guys like it did need to go up there yeah because our staff's doing it yeah yeah, exactly so uh sometimes it shocks me how easy it is like uh i'll walk into the building and (laughs) everything will be running like the projectors (laughs) will be running and the background music's running and the cameras are set up and And i'm just looking around like who did this right and my mom's walking around with the ipad (laughs) jatinder's still drinking his morning coffee (laughs) it's funny because at jatinder's wedding his mom gave me the biggest hug because that was around the time we got it (laughs) (laughs) um and then we're doing a bunch of live stream stuff now too like that's this is phase two right very quickly before boys we jump into that i i kind of just want to give you how that started right how the live stream started because uh come march 2020 things started escalating really quickly and i was just looking back to some of our emails from the regulatory body and how quickly things change and how quickly the numbers allowed at the funeral home change Uh, what was the reasoning why we had such a big funeral um so if you kind of look back 20 years ago this is long before we opened uh the community in, in the gta our South Asian community was growing at a rapid pace. Still is, I think. Still is, very rapidly. Uh, And we have big events, you know? Like, we have big birthday parties. We have big weddings. We have big funerals. And, you know, people had opened up the facilities to accommodate certain things, but funerals were so far behind. Yeah, We were going... Uh, in Brampton, especially to smaller family-owned funeral homes uh, and great businesses, great operations, but they just couldn't handle the amount the of capacity, the right? capacity, right? The capacity. So the whole the whole reason behind Brampton Crematorium is to accommodate uh, larger families, uh, and that's where that kind of came from. And it's kind of weird looking at it now, where there's nobody allowed in the building, pretty much, and, right? Like it's so limited. On that point, then, like there's a thing in our community and your dad says it always too it's like you can miss a happy event you can miss a wedding or something but in our community what's so good about it is we we're there for each other in the time of loss yeah right and this could be from the souls which again one is not allowed right now you can't go to people's house to grieve Uh, so now if you're not allowed at the funeral home what do you do and i know i'm sort of building up the next part is Come March, when we're only allowed 50 people, now you're allowed 20 people, and then we get the final blow is 10 people. Uh, yep. I go, get on an emergency call. I think the, the first thing I did was when I read that email was call Gadeeb. Yeah. So let, let us know what happened right after that. Like Yeah, so I think uh, I think phase two has almost had two things going on at the same time. So my, well, <laughs> my new phase two wasn't really planned. Like it was thought about. Like it we was, knew we wanted to go that yeah. direction, but it definitely and, and like it, it was point, right? it was actively changing, right? Like phase two was you know, hey, we need live streaming up, but then at the same time, it's like, hey, you know, we need cameras now for the cremation area, right? Like, this is all going on relatively around the same time. Yeah, so basically, uh, the regulatory body had said that there's no more witnessing cremations. This is in March uh, 2020. Why don't you explain that just for the people who don't even know what a witnessing cremation is? Yeah, so uh, basically, we have two types of cremations that happen at the funeral home. One is called a non-witnessing cremation, and that means that the family is not... uh, they're not present at the start of the cremation time. And then the timing of the cremation is not set in stone. It's kind of takes place when the crematorium operator has time. And then, but what most of our families do, I would say like 95% of our families do is what's called a witnessing cremation. Um, And a witnessing cremation means that you schedule the date and time of your cremation. So at the end of the funeral service um, and the family is there to witness the start of the cremation and assist in the beginning of the cremation process. So here uh, in the Western world and how our crematorium works, it's done by a button. So it's a gas uh, powered chamber. It's uh, computerized, right? Computerized, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you press a button. But uh, the significance of that button is the start of the cremation is like the start of the, the torch or the flame that starts the cremation. And in, in India, uh, 
that's how it goes, right? The the son or the daughter or the spouse, they're the ones that yeah. are igniting the flame to start the cremation process. And to take that away from people, like I had pe- like a v- not an easy time, but a lot easier time explaining to people that only 20 people can come to the funeral home or only 10 people can come to the funeral home. And that, they kind of swallowed that pill. But when you were telling them that they couldn't start the cremation process yeah. and... At this point, before we had our cameras going, that they might not be able to witness the they can't see, see it. it. They won't yeah. be able to see it. That was what we hit got some hard. aggressive calls, right? And, yeah. I, and I understood all of them. Like we had some that called in, like you're not letting our loved one have a dignified service. Yeah. You're not. You're not, not letting, letting them. Deep, right? You're not treating them like a human being. And little could we say that it's not us, right? Like hey, you know, yeah. with the pandemic and everything with the regulatory body, but. That's when the emergency call came to you guys. And I was like, guys, I need something in 24 hours. And, <laughs> yeah, and I think you guys let us borrow some of your eminence cameras. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, it was, it was like, before we get into the actual live stream part, like that part, it, it was, you know, we got the call and I think it was like, we basically rescheduled everything we were doing. We moved all our resources to the funeral home. Yes. And then ourselves, we were both there. Yeah. It was overnight. I was there too that first night. Yeah, I stayed was, overnight. I think I was sleeping. You guys, were there late, you guys were there later than us. I think you alarmed that night. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, like you said, it, 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 alarm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like you said, we at that point when we got the call, it's like understood how serious this was, right? Yeah. It was, this is a matter of families witnessing the cremation, right? Um, and, and then again, at that point we realized like we had to do whatever we had to do to get this up and running. And like I said, for two nights in a row, I think we were there. Right. It was almost like 24 hours. We were, yeah. Anytime we can get in the, in the funeral home, we were there kind of, you know, getting these cameras installed. Yeah, yeah because you know, the, another thing is, is working there is, you know, business can't stop. So we have to work around that. So usually the best time to work is in the evening yeah. or like, you know, once things slow down a little bit. So we're usually there, you know, seven to 3 a.m., 4 a.m. kind of thing and come back the next day. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it was a, you know, fun, I would say project at that point. It was just trying to get something up and running quickly. Yeah. Um, We were able to do it. it was, Which we did. We, you guys, rewarding, you guys man. got it, it up like, quick. Once you can do act that quickly, like honestly, I didn't even know if we were going to be able to do it. It was just like, okay, we got to try yeah. this. We have to, right? Yeah. Uh, again, for the community, it's, it's needed. Otherwise, it's just bad on everybody. And, and what we came out with was obviously you guys helped us on the crematorium side, having cameras. Yeah. So these families could witness that mm-hmm. final right, basically. But also, we got a very quick Facebook live stream. Yeah. And Facebook was actually just in their mind idea. We're like, yo, this is the easiest to use. And just in there, I think you can explain why we use Facebook. So uh, Facebook, one, uh, as a platform is... Uh, used by a lot of elderly people. That's like the nicest way I can put it. Like my mom, my mom's on Facebook. Don't, uh, get, don't get yourself in trouble. <laughs> that's probably why I'm not on Facebook. Um, I'm on but, Facebook. But I'm the majority, Facebook. majority of our people that were attending funerals are that baby boomer generation, right? right. Who who have now started or not even started. They've been losing their their parents, right? Uh, that's just kind parents of parents and sometimes friends, friends, which is sad. Right? Yeah. yeah, some of their yeah, because they're in my my parents are in their 70s almost now right yeah so uh it started on facebook um what were some of the problems with facebook though i mean it, it started off great because we had a solution yeah. boom right like for sure and I, i'm like sitting there in my chair like hey we did it right? Like, <laughs> hey, like, and now looking back on that that was not a great product like oh, it, oh. it wasn't again it, it was the best available at the time right. it did the sure, job it did right? the job it yeah. was very quick it was we, we we did what we could in the time that we we're had. also using our, our equipment from 2012 yeah. at that point uh, in the funeral home um, so but it was replaced like you guys did come change all that old equipment yeah. that was kind of just collecting dust uh, not being used and now came with this quick solution but what I noticed and Jatinder can, can talk more about this was that slowly we started realizing the problems with Facebook like uh, privacy uh, so this was an event and Gadeep, that was the best way to set it up. Like to keep it private, we had to set up as an event. But then we realized the same baby boomer generation that we're trying to do it for was having a trouble trouble getting on it, inviting their friends and then clicking attending. Cause even if they joined the group, then they had to click attending. And that mm-hmm. one thing would throw them off. And we get calls in the middle of the night. Yeah, a lot of calls. Yeah, yeah. M- most of our calls went from funeral related calls to just live, live stream calls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and I think there was an issue with the music. Gadi, maybe you guys can explain the that copyright as well. Copyright issues, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, they have an algorithm, right? I, I was gonna say like, uh, well, for the the sound issue was it was an algorithm, right? The algorithm algorithm after a certain amount of time would pick up 
the copyright on the audio track playing and would just completely mute it or just shut the stream off right yeah. which, which is what started becoming the bigger issue um, but i think what really like putting it out of the time there was a conversation going on about um you know setting up a actual live stream service i think what really pushed us over the edge to get that going was you know it was, it was unfortunately it was a, f- a funeral service for a friend of ours oh, um, yeah. and yeah, yeah. it popped up in one of our whatsapp groups right and our friends were like hey you, uh, guys there's this funeral service but we can't figure it out and it, it, mind you these guys work in like it they're very tech savvy um, and I kind of side messaged him on right away and I was like, this is yeah. a problem, right? Like these guys are tech savvy guys. Yeah. They understand it and they can't figure out how to get to, and like, it, I think That's it was, like, you know, it was a couple hours, maybe a couple hours before the funeral service that we actually figured out how to get everyone like a link to watch yeah. it. Yeah, it was, it was, um, it, was it was a chaos. And, and I think it was that day that we said, you know what, like we need to figure something out yeah, for this. Enough, yeah. and, and I think that was exactly on our end too, because if we were having this much trouble as the people setting it up, yeah. imagine what that family was going through when the night before they're calling us, right? Like yeah, sometimes me then they're, to be honest, we're like, oh, we got like, you know, seven calls from this family at 1030. Sounds like we're complaining, but imagine what that family is going through. Right. They have a funeral the next day and they're going through way more than us just to try to get their friends to watch the service, right? So we were 100% on board when you guys, uh, King with FuneralLive.ca and I'm going to let you guys talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think, you know, it was never the idea to make our own, to be honest with you. It was always like, let's see what's out there. Um, but like when, when we started evaluating Pinita now, I remember me and you jumped on so many calls to kind of see what's out there, what makes sense. It wasn't great. No. Nothing was great. Nothing did it well. So uh, we ended up just kind of building our own. Yeah. Um, and honestly like last year with the pandemic and all that stuff and all the craziness happening in the world that was the one thing i was super proud of like we were actually able to take a problem present a solution implement a solution and like people loved it It, like so well received um you know everything was on there your live stream condolence board you can send flowers to the family if you wanted to all of that stuff in one place you can get the recording after yeah personalized to the family you can get a book of memories basically like all the condolences that were put on can be emailed to the family a list of attendees alongside their email addresses if you want to send out like a thank you message to those who attended and then we started seeing the numbers right like we had that conversation of like we can actually now track data like how much and when did we launch it for the people so it was actually launched properly in july july and then it's uh we now have like what six months of data like actual hard data of how it's doing and if we're trending we're trending 60 70 thousand views a month maybe more now yeah, more. We, did, we, we did a quarter million views in six months yeah. I, I think it's hard to see like when we're at the funeral home and we open up the live stream and there's like oh there's a hundred people watching but then you start like you know you start looking at the analysis and you're like hold on there's a hundred people watching Every right funeral service, yeah. and, and, and you start doing the numbers. Yeah, hundred, and that could be easy to say. Multiple people in one house. So I, I, was, I was just say multiple people in one house, and also after like over a two-hour service, you know that number could fluctuate. But like, it could be a hundred people every you know twenty minutes tuning in, yeah. right? And then you end up having like three, four hundred people viewing a service right and then we saw we saw the reach of it too like yeah there was your uh toronto bc california england but then there's some places you like never even heard of right like like somebody's (laughs) somebody's somebody's cha-cha watching from africa or something that is it was it was like we we saw almost every country in the world and remember i showed you the heat map the heat map and the entire map the entire world is colored in right which is insane south korea yeah. was on there crazy i was, I was like what's going on? you know i was gonna say like just like, like like with all of this like everything that we're mentioning here is and going back to what good deep said you know when we started this this uh, talking about the live stream is that you know there was other solutions out there but none of these would have done any of this for the families no. right yeah. and none of them are dedicated right it, was, it, it, it wasn't it, yeah it's like live streaming events that are used for maybe corporate or something like that now when a family like calls me at the funeral home and they're like oh do you guys have like zoom or facetime <laughs> or this i'm like no i'm really proud to say that we have a dedicated private funeral service platform yeah uh, that we bring it up all the time yeah all i say private i say pri- yeah, pri- yeah. i had an email exchange the other day right just with our mortgage company and i brought it up to them like i always bring it up yeah. to anybody that i talk to because you guys are proud obviously i, I know i saw you guys instagram yeah. post but yeah we're just as proud it's like yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It, it is something we proud the of, value right? that you gave to families like we we've talked about this many times in the past but these people who were only allowed the 10 people at their funeral, imagine this service wasn't this good. Imagine if it was, uh, you know, here, come Skype or come put a phone up. And, and guys, 
we used to do that before. Like we're not yeah. proud of it, but that's what was available. It, it is what it is at and, that point, right? You got to try to fill the gap. And I, and I think that pride comes from just, it's always been the way we ran our business. But like you said, I mean, me and him didn't ever sit here and go, hey, you know, one day we're going to do live streams for funerals, mm-hmm. right? Like, I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, we're in the DJ AV. Just like we never thought we were going to do funerals. <laughs> exactly. So, um, like you said, it was never in the pipeline and we would have never had thought about, you know, setting up a live stream service for funeral homes, right? Yeah. But when you guys came to us and, you know, you know, we went through it, we, there's all these options and none of them actually, you know, cater to the funeral home, right? Yeah. At that point, it's like, we're not going to just be like, hey, you guys should use this one, right? And I think that's where I started. We're like, we're going to do this and we're going to do it well and we're going to make sure it's, you know, it's it's everything that's custom. These, yeah, it's custom. And, custom. It's, and it's it's what these families need. Right? We, we started off with a like a fixed camera uh, on, on the roof of the funeral home now to a point where uh, based on like presets that you've automated into that iPad, uh, my mom can use it again. I don't know about that example, <laughs> but like we can zoom into the casket. We can zoom into the podium when people are giving speeches. I had yeah. someone give me feedback that, you know, it felt like they were at the funeral. And I, I, I never thought that was going to be the point of this, but it, it was heartwarming to let, like, to know that you've provided someone a service now where in the worst case scenario, when they, couldn't be there like they'd like to be at least they felt like they were there, and you know, you know i yeah. think this was like a little bit overdue right like covid aside there's how many times have you guys heard that like hey people from overseas or whatever can't make it to the funeral like you said right we started this whole segment off with like you know we might not be there for the happy moments but our yeah. community is always coming together for the for the moments of loss and things like that now imagine you being overseas and not a, physically not able to come or whatever it might be um, this this service I think was needed even back then. It just took us a global epidemic or pandemic. To, 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 yeah, for us like to how how many that. times have we seen you know somebody at a funeral FaceTiming off their phone for the family back yeah. home? Right. I had and someone told me told me that they went to another funeral home and they had a laptop set up in front of the camera yeah. and they couldn't the person that was sitting in the funeral home couldn't see their loved one yeah, because yeah. it was blocked off by a laptop. And we get it. Not uh, all funeral homes are going to be equipped the same, uh, but we want to kind of you know, get a step ahead and yeah. we want to be the people that are bringing this to this industry that I think Panit speaks to in some other parts of the series. This industry is not tech savvy. Uh, super traditional, right? Super okay. traditional. Yeah. Guys, just, all the time. yeah, just sticking to that, like, that point and you briefly good deep touched it, but this is a new norm. So like, for example, guys yeah. would be like, we could hear sit here and think, hey, we spent a lot of time and money developing virtual funerals. It's not going to exist. But we know that's not the truth. Yep. And I'll yep. give you guys two reasons like I want you guys to all elaborate. Particularly for our community, pre-COVID, what did everyone do? Everyone waited until Saturday, Sunday. Some families yeah. would wait till the following weekend. Why? So everybody can come. Yeah. So I understand the importance of all being together. But now if you have this live stream service that's so good, and you can pay your condolences there. You can see the body. You can clearly go to the family afterwards and do the absolves and still have that one-on-one right. mm-hmm. thing. So just touch on that a little bit. This will last. This is a new norm. Yeah. I, I think so for sure. I think, you know, um, you see how how our generation specifically has changed and things are changing. I think, you know, many times with our day-to-day lives it, it, it becomes it does become difficult to attend these things however yeah. it's very you know it's convenient it's easy now to you know drop drop the family a message send some flowers to the house or whatever right and that, at least the family knows once they uh, get the um the condolence board after the fact or the list of names right i think you were saying now people have started to send thank you cards and thank you notes. yeah they, they, they have the email address right so they can send thank yeah. yous yeah i mean i think that just you know it still brings that sense of community to them 100 percent, right um, I don't think that's going anywhere. Yeah. Right. I think you know preference is always going to be in person, but I think it's going to be a bit of a hybrid. Yeah. And I think I think that's why it was so important to create something where it's like you feel you're actually the experience, right? Like you're actually at the funeral service, right? That was the whole vision behind the live streams because we we knew that this was going to become the norm, right? Yeah. It's um, it's weird how that's the norm now, but like going back to Panid asked me why why do we have. Brampton Crematorium. It's a large facility that can accommodate a lot of people. And when we first got into contact with you guys, uh, it's kind of funny that we were trying to make the building accessible for the most More, amount yeah. of people possible. Yeah. So we have our large um, room. We call it Sweet D&E. Um, and a lot of the families would request it on the weekend. It's the largest room. It seats pre-pandemic. It would seat 
I think 430 chairs, something like that. And oftentimes it would be filled. Standing 30, 40 extra. Days. Right. Yeah. And then it's like, we don't want these guests to stand. Overflow. We have two other rooms exactly for overflow. Before they would just sit in those rooms and now we brought you guys in. You guys made it so that again, from the iPad with a touch of a button, you can see what's going on in the main room through any of the other rooms, yeah. which gave us another almost 400 mm-hmm. seats, right? And fast forward to March 2020, now it's like, <laughs> okay, now all that stuff you did yeah, for yeah. me, thanks, but forget that. I need you to be able to make it so this is only for 10 people, but it feels like there's 800 people yeah, here, I mean, right? You know, if you told me in March that like when we got that phone call that, hey, you know, we're going to eventually build our own service and then eventually crash that service because that happened, hey, yeah. right? Like yeah. December, December, the entire service crashed because there's so many people on it. Um, and we had to react quickly and we, we had to, you know, basically move it to our own private, we have our own private server now and it's all moved over there because there's too many people logging in, like, which is good problems to have. However, I would have never guessed it. Right? And, and, and again, like that goes to the whole, the future is that, you know, when we started this, there was maybe 50 people, hundred people tuning in, but people are realizing that their service is available now they and you do now. have three, 400 people tuning into yep. services. It's expected now almost, right? You guys see this on your side. I think it's almost expected. Hey, what's the link? That's one of the first, right? like three, yeah. Yeah. it's one of the first three questions people ask, right? Our what are your rules? How quickly, can we, right? Like, yeah. they, they, like, and they talk. Yeah, they talk. It's a, it, even though we're such a big community, we're a tight knit community, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, what, it's very easy to send the link through WhatsApp. Exactly. Here's the password. Yeah, join in, and like we're seeing that. We see that, you know, we see the numbers. I think the numbers are higher from mobile than they are on desktop. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, we, for we, sure. We see it on our end, right? Those those statistics. And the right number end. of calls that we get in the middle of the night are pretty much none at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I think the the best thing is with all of us guys is. We're still trying to improve it. We know it's not 100%, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. It's getting, it's getting, you can comment on that, Khadi? Um, I'll say that we're doing a lot of like under the hood stuff. Yeah. Um, it'll make our lives easier. I'm managing it easier a little bit. But like yeah, our, our goal is to be able to, you know, do things a lot more efficiently. Is is we're, we're focusing on efficiency. We've we've built a product now. It works well. It's, uh, it does what it does. Um, but on the on the back end, it's, we're making it a lot more efficient now. Yeah, I, and, and, yeah, and I think the the focus again, like coming back to like that efficiency part. At the end of it, the reason for doing it is is for the families. Um, you know, if they set up a service, they want kind of want to get the the link right away, right? So just streamline that process that they have the link right away. But then also, like you know, we've we've started to experiment with things like picture in picture to get a you know, Jitinder, I know I know you're a big uh, fan of this <laughs> this this uh, upcoming upgrade but like yeah. can you, know? you just like for the not the tech savvy people simplify that what S- is picture uh, in picture uh, yeah simplify to say is just that you, you know typically you have a, a slideshow playing at the funeral service and the way we had it now is you would see it like in the shot you would see it kind of on the screens that are at the funeral home mm-hmm. but sitting at home you know you're not getting a clear picture so now picture in picture is essentially taking that slideshow and putting it onto your screen yeah so as you're watching the service you're also getting, getting a the, clear feed a clear of cut of the slideshows exactly the slideshow, yeah. Yeah. Um, and through our website like integrated with your guys stuff too you can send condolence messages in so it our our services and your services are like i feel like they're connecting in like you know yeah from being two websites to one website so i'm kind of excited for the future yeah, of this it's gonna, as well. It's, it's going to be really good. It's going to be really good for, I think everybody involved, it's going to be really good for the staff at the funeral home. Um, it's going to be really good for the families because, you know, they only have to, once they sit down with your staff, your staff are able to just do everything themselves. It, well, they're going to be able to do everything themselves and it's going to be one email to them and that's it. And they're ready to go kind of thing. So it's it's going to be efficiency is all across the board. And we should have that up in the next couple of months, I think. Yeah. Perfect, guys. I think I've wrapped up. If you guys have any concluding remarks, uh this year chance but i just want to thank you guys eminence is a big part of pcvc right you guys might know that already it. but it. <laughs> your guys are an extension of our business you guys are like our partners and we value the the relationship that we have and i think there's a lot more planned for the future 100 well, percent. i think you know this this started off as, as strictly business but it's evolved to a lot more than that for right? sure we yeah. all that kind of stuff so I'm, you know we're really glad to say that you know you guys are our partners and very much so honestly the business aside i think the the stuff we're doing with the community is what really hits home for me like we're doing a lot there and i think we're gonna continue yeah the joint i was gonna i was gonna say just a just a second that and you know it's funny that the end of this podcast going right back to the beginning but yeah. um the, the th- stuff behind the live streaming like honestly it's it, why we put so much time and effort and continue to do so is that like we said at the beginning of the podcast there's nothing more rewarding than giving back yeah. and when we see you know that we're able to give these families like 
the the perfect kind of final farewell yeah. um that's rewarding it's and it's, it's, civil, you can say. yeah it's and, and more than anything i could have probably worked with you know a lot of people and they would probably give me a camera and somehow made it connect to something that would have played and that would have been it and, that, yeah, and never been an upgrade so to much it. more and i think yeah. that's why for the people sitting at home we have a whole series de- like a, a whole segment now dedicated to this lot virtual yeah. funerals yeah. it was a big part of our 2020 and, and i think yeah, I, I just want to thank you guys for coming along the journey with us i know um like we spoke to it's not uh common to take technological technological advancements in the funeral home it's yeah. very uh risky uh thank you for taking that risk with us thank you for uh branding you know your stuff it, it it has a lot of there's a lot of accountability when you put your name on something yeah, yeah. then it's it's not like oh you let us do the first couple months of it by ourselves and gave us all the blame no you from day one you were a part of it and, and i appreciate that no we we appreciate you guys uh taking the chance on us yeah i right? appreciate you guys trusting us and giving us an opportunity to do save all right and uh, thank you for answering my phone calls okay. <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say we're, we're always there for I you guys. think i think well, that would be the right story to end this, uh, <laughs> this, this yeah. uh, topic on bat signal <laughs> yeah guys so there was well, this one time at our ajax location our staff kind of made a mistake with the link that they set up uh so the family got the wrong link sukkah set it up the right way and bajara on a sunday is just probably grocery shopping <laughs> right, with his wife or something and i give him a call i'm a sukkah bro i need you more than ever he goes what happened i mean like, the link's not working the family has the wrong one he goes all right man like give me 45 minutes i'm just shopping right uh, I get a call back 20 minutes later and this guy's like, Panini, it's good to go. I'm like, how'd you get home? He goes, no, no, I left my shopping cart. <laughs> it's good to go. And guys, on that point, thank you so, thank much. You so much. I thank think we have guys. a great future together. Thank you guys. Awesome.